Hello and welcome to this quick video. This is just a video to very quickly share a little bit of pain that I've been having. Um, because for me, the DJI system has become the one that every HD system that's come out since the HD Zero stuff and things like Walksnail has been compared against and for very good reason. This is a fantastic system. Now it came out in summer 2019 and pretty much changed everything. I've heard it being described as the first minute mile and then everyone started to do the same thing. But DJI really were the first to bring consumer grade, high quality HD FPV to the masses. Now I wasn't going to invest in the DJI system because when it was released, the date for release was pretty much exactly the same week that this came out for the Fat Shark Shark Bite system, based on the HD Zero stuff that's still available now, still a fantastic option. But when Fat Shark took one look at the DJI system, they delayed the release. I know it was August, it must have been August, because I was actually on holiday in Florida at the time and had a slightly panicked message from Fat Shark going, stop the video, stop the video, um, we're not releasing it now. Now, I got the goggles in, mine came in, I got them March, I think, of 2020, around Easter time. And the only reason that I really got them in, if I'm being completely honest, was I was starting to make videos on that short bite system. And I knew that every video I was going to make, the question was going to be on every video, how does it compare to the DJI system? So I thought, well, I kind of got to get them in to try it. And I got them in and started using them and fell in love. There's no other word for it. Fantastic system. And I could suddenly see what everyone else had been raving about. Now, the only thing is these are not perfect by a country mile. Uh, these are the version 1 and the version 2 goggles, and I'll get onto why I've ended up having to buy another set, uh, and I didn't want to in a moment. The OSD support in them, uh, by default, was kind of added after several firmware versions. It's basic MSP OSD, multi wee serial protocol, um, on-screen display stuff. It was designed for beta flight. The iNav developers had to then develop a version of their MSP telemetry protocol that was dumbed down to the point where the goggles would work with it. Um, I hated the fact that you had to plug them in and everything had to be activated and reported back via your account and the application on your PC to DJI. I thought the air units were overly expensive. Um, you know, £150 a model, about 110 for the air unit light seem like a lot of money and it stacks up quickly if you have more than a handful of things that you want to put the stuff in. There's no HDMI out by default and you can't record the on-screen display or the telemetry that the goggles are getting back. So there was lots of things that bugged me about them. The majority of those things have actually been fixed in things like the HD Zero and the Walk Snail systems, but then they're much newer and they've got the benefit of those several years of HD systems being around in the market thanks to DJI. But my big bugbear and the reason for making this video is not to talk about how fat the DJI system is, it's to talk about how crap DJI is at supporting their customer base. Now these are the V1s around my neck. These are the actual ones that I got in, in spring 2020 and I'm recording this at the end of December 2022 and the latest air units, the OC3 air units, will not work with these. However, these will still work absolutely fine with the other air units that I've got and all the models behind me that have the original air unit and the air unit like that CADIC stuff that's now kind of run cam. I can absolutely fly on this and I was very happy. I wasn't going to upgrade these version 1s to the version 2s because I didn't need to. There wasn't a compelling event. However, there kind of is now, thanks a lot DJI. The O3, the latest air unit, which is 1080p and has all these other benefits, which kind of brings it up to the standard, things like the HD Zero and the Walksnail system, doesn't work with this. So I've had to get a set of O2s, but not for any other reason than some of the stuff that I'm getting in for review early in 2023 is starting to be shipped with the DJI O3 air unit. So if I want to fly that stuff and to show you what the footage is like and how it performs and have that FPV footage that everyone likes to see, I needed to get hold of these. Now this is a classic DJI move where they build in an upgrade path that forces you to upgrade the hardware. It's how they make money. It's why there's so many versions of things like the Phantom and the Mavics, most of which can't use the other controllers. 
it's kind of the same model as Apple, I guess. You depreciate the value of the existing models and kit and create enough of a gap in the mind of the customer to get them to buy the latest stuff. And that's fine if you are made of money, but lots of pilots aren't. These are not cheap pieces of kit. And after nearly three years, I suppose you could say with these, if we kind of pushed it out to uh, well after after they came out, um, you know, DJI have kind of said, oh, you should be kind of on these or even the brand new goggles that they've just brought out. Three years, yeah, not bad for DJI, but actually lots of analog pilots who are looking for a HD system want something that they can use for five, six, seven, eight years, because if you're going to invest in HD, it's an expensive proposition and you don't want to have to throw away that investment after a couple of years. Luckily, for those of us with the V1s, uh, Runcam, who has kind of replaced Cadix as DJI's buddy for the creation of the air units and cameras things. I think the air units are still made by uh, DJI and Runcam kind of put their things like the Wasp and stuff on it. Spoke to Runcam last week and they confirmed that they have no intention of stopping. They still have loads of stock and they're still getting new stuff and that they will be building their DJI version one goggle compatible systems and making that stuff available for the foreseeable future. And that is great. So if you have the V1s, just get everyone on the planet is going 030303 for the DJI stuff. You know what? It's fine. You don't have to grade but not unless you want to use those o3 systems plus the community has created a ton of really cool stuff to address some of those shortcomings that i talked about at the beginning so massive big thumbs up to the guys behind the wtfos hack that you can put on this that actually fixes things like the on-screen display being better than just a bog basic msp version that there you go, DJI drops the mic, walks off stage and leaves it for the rest of the community to figure out how to make that work. But also for people who have figured out how to get the HDMI out of the USB port at the bottom onto things like your Android phone. There's loads of that stuff all floating around YouTube that shows you how to do it. The other thing, of course, is that for those pilots that are made of money, that want to go and invest in the O3 stuff and stay on that carousel with DJI, it means that there is secondhand stuff to come around. And that's what these are. These are not new. These are secondhand from eBay. Uh, it's always that slightly heart-wrenching moment when you kind of plug them in the first time. Um, you kind of plug them into the computer to activate them because these weren't activated. They were very new. I guess they came as part of a kit and that person didn't want to use them. Um, and then, you know, plugging in your SD card and binding it to an air unit for the first time, you kind of have your fingers crossed to each of those stages. But so far, so good. These things have powered up and they're working perfectly. But there is going to be more cheaper dji stuff things like the v1s and these v2s floating around as people upgrade so if you want to get into the dji stuff then there's going to be a lower cost way to do it so with what i said at the beginning about dji being that game changer and it, this is one of the few things that genuinely was when it was released despite what other thumbnails will tell you walks now i think in terms of an outfit that appear to be investing for the longer term so that you don't get two or three years out of your goggles before they basically decide that that's it. Um, I'm getting a lot more comfortable that those guys have a different business model. And that's one that personally I could get behind. Because if I didn't have to get these O3 goggles um, or O3 compatible goggles, you know what? I wouldn't have bought them. I'd have just sweated these out until eventually things started breaking, give up, and then just swap stuff over to Walksnail. DJI absolutely had the option when they brought out the new air unit to make a backwards compatible mode for the V1s, the people who were there at the beginning who invested in this technology and kind of prove that it was going to work. I think the FPV market as a whole, thanks to DJI in a very big part, has grown worldwide. Talking to Fat Shark a week or so ago, uh, they think the numbers, the global install base of FPV goggles has risen quite dramatically over the last three or four years. And a big part of it is thanks to this kind of stuff kicking around. So we do have to thank DJI for that but I wish DJI wouldn't build in that obsolescence would build in those more of that backwards compatible stuff I like the fact that the V2s and the latest goggles have the options to work with the old system and the new one still have to rebind everything which again isn't fantastic and that's great but a little bit more effort would have been nice 
So just wanted to have a bit of a rant about that really. So you will be seeing O3 units on the channel, not because I want to join the bandwagon about how great the O3 system is, because right now the one that's getting my vote, big vote, is the walk snail stuff. But more so that when I get those ready to fly things in quads and planes that come with those units installed, I can actually give them a proper flight and test. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.